Hey, good morning. Welcome to your boat counts. Gentlemen, do you remember that old movie, Bull Durham? Yeah, in the scene where that the manager says, baseball's a simple game. You throw the ball, you catch the ball, you hit the ball. And I'm watching the media this week struggle with what a state budget is, how that works. And so I thought we would do some schoolhouse rock this morning, okay? So when it comes to how budgets are set, well, how are budgets set? And who's in, in charge? Well, I think the most important thing for viewers at home to know this morning is that the budget is set uh, from July 1 through the next June 30. So we're halfway through the budget that the legislature proposed last year. The reason we're having all these budget hearings, both in the Senate and in the House, is to see where those budgets are halfway through the budget cycle, to see if they're short on money, to see if they're ahead on their spending. It's so the legislature can have a good idea of what the budget is so that when they go to prepare the budget for the next fiscal year that will end at the end of this session that will be for 23-24, they'll know what they have in it. So there's a lot of hubbub right now going on about budgets, but really this is very normal. Okay, so you saw the confusion. What do you have to say about how we appropriate money in Oklahoma? Well, the, the confusion is over. We've been having this week, and it's a great process, where the agencies come before the legislature, as they say, as my colleague said, here's how we're doing, and here's our projected budget next year. There was some confusion about the State Department of Education budget, but this is a normal process. And again, uh, Secretary Walters, and now Superintendent Walters, has come back and said he's going to change some of the old budget and add $100 million to reading. I'm really supportive of that. It's a great idea. We, we need to focus on reading. But at the end of the day, it is the legislature that sets the budgets. And all that's happening now is agencies are saying what they would like it to be. Okay, can we drill down on that for just a second? So people have the difficulty understanding there's hearings in January and there's hearings in February. What is the difference? Yeah, so here's the difference. The budget is going to come out around May. What is happening right now is agencies are requesting what they would like to be in the budget. So let's take the education budget, which has come out. Secretary or Superintendent Walters presented the old budget. Now he's presenting in next week his new budget, which again I said has $100 million for reading. I'm so excited we are focusing on teaching kids to read. It'd be the most aggressive investment any state has ever made in reading and, and getting kids to read. But the truth is, whether he asks for it or not, it is the legislature that he has to convince. That's who, si who sets the budget, and then the governor signs or vetoes. And that's what the Constitution says. It's important people understand the process. Oh, absolutely. And, and what you're seeing right now is a lot of uh, bill reading. So there are uh, three th over 3,000 bills and resolutions, and everyone's going through them, including the media. And they sensationalize a lot of the stuff that's literally never going to see the light of day. Those bills um, by my colleague uh, that's sitting next to me get assigned to committees. Those committees will start hearing those bills in February. Those bills will then move to the House floor, the Senate floor. They'll vote on those. Those measures will flip over to the other houses. They'll have to go through that process. Look, government takes a while to work. It's done that way for a reason. Um, it's because we want to be judicious in how we're creating new laws. That's what's taking place right now. People need to take a big, deep breath and get ready. Okay, and get, re get your popcorn for that. Okay, coming up, some registration numbers you're going to be kind of stunned about when we come back. Welcome back. It's not that long ago that all of rural Oklahoma was basically represented by Democrats. That's gone. All right, back 2004, something like that. Chad Warmington's over there. He's one of the first chiefs of staff for Republican speakers. And registration continues to change. Now, every county in Oklahoma, except for one, majority GOP. What does that mean? Yeah, here's what we're seeing. Mary Fallon's first day of office was the first time Republicans controlled the governor, the House, and the Senate in the history of the state of Oklahoma. Since that time, new numbers have come out. Register, registered voters are flocking away of today's ultra-liberal Democrat Party. It's not so much that the voters of Oklahoma has changed, it's that the party has changed. And as long as it continues down this extremist positions, you're going to continue to see voters flock to the Republican Party. Now there's a lesson for the Republicans. Be mainstream with the voters. They want conservative values, they want freedom, they want liberty. And if we keep doing that, you're looking at, at a century-long Republican majority in Oklahoma. It's a good point. Two decades ago, this place was run by Democrats, right? A lesson there. Yeah, I don't know so much that it's a lesson in just the fact that Oklahoma's always had conservative voters. I, I don't know why anybody's shocked by this. It's just the conservative voters used to be registered Democrats, and now those same conservative voters 
are registered Republicans. I think the real lesson here is what are the elected officials, regardless of their party, doing for constituents, doing for the, the folks of the state of Oklahoma? I know one of the things that's not happening right now is we're not moving forward in the way that everyone's talking about it. We still remain near last in a lot of important categories, including education. Those are the measures that matter most to uh, regular voters, not what party registration someone is. Okay, I'll take you up on that. There, there is something that is to be learned from this and these numbers, you saw what happened for two decades. What is the big lesson? Yeah, I think the lesson here is for folks to stop focusing so much on a uh, registered party. Look, we spend way too much time watching national media and seeing uh, the ping pong ball going back and forth between Republicans and Democrats and getting nothing for it. We talked about that on budget deficit. For decades, uh, different parties have been in charge and nobody's actually done anything. What we need is elected officials that are responsive uh, to the folks that put them in office to actually get things done, to accomplish things, to make us first in education, first in infrastructure, uh, to really work on um, getting the workforce that we need for the future. These are the things that matter the most, not what political party someone is. Okay, help us understand what it means what these numbers say and what it means to us. Well, here's what I'll agree with my colleague. What, what it does mean is people at the end of the day care about responsiveness. They care about doing things the right way. Since Republicans have been in power, we've passed right to work. We fixed our unemployment system. We fixed our, fixed our workers' compensation system. Overall, we've cut taxes and we've shrinked the growth of government and we've increased your prosperity and individual liberty. What that means to the next generation of Republican leaders is do what we've continued to do. Don't be Washington, D.C. Listen to the people. Cut taxes this year, give more parent choice, give more money to education, and we are going to continue this dominance as the ultra-left continues to take over the Democrat Party in Oklahoma. Interesting analysis. Thank you both. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.